Stan Gibalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV, Whiskey One, Good Vibrations, here to talk about harmonic dipoles, that is to say, what happens when you feed a dipole antenna at a harmonic of its fundamental frequency. Well, the fundamental frequency of a dipole antenna is that frequency at which it measures one half of a, an electrical wavelength from end to end. Under those circumstances, the current, the radio frequency current intensity along the antenna is maximum in the center and theoretically zero at the ends. In actual practice, it's a little bit, it's just a very tiny bit at the ends because of capacitive coupling to the outside environment, even the atmosphere. Even the relative humidity can affect that a little bit, but for all intents and purposes, theoretically, the current is maximum in the center and zero at the ends. This is in the case of a one-half wavelength antenna. For example, on the 7 megahertz amateur band, this length is approximately 20 meters or 66 feet. On the 14 megahertz amateur band, that length is about 10 meters or 33 feet. Now, suppose that we take an antenna like this, a half wave length antenna, and it's operating at its fundamental frequency, F, of say 7.025 megahertz in the 40 meter amateur band. So it's going to be about 66 feet or 20 meters from end to end. We feed it with an open wire line such as ladder line so that we can operate it on frequencies other than this half wavelength resonant fundamental frequency and not suffer too much from standing wave ratio losses or something like that. What will happen if we try to feed this antenna, if we if we switch bands and we go to 14 megahertz or 14.05 uh, 14.050 megahertz exactly twice that frequency. What is going to happen? Well, the antenna isn't going to be a half wavelength anymore. It's going to be a full wavelength long. Each side of the antenna will measure a half a wavelength and the distribution of the current then will look like this. Maxima in the midpoints of each side, minima at the ends, and a minimum in the center. Now you might wonder why I drew these two waves both right side up. You might wonder why I didn't draw this wave, the one on the right, like this. The reason for that is rather complex, but the best way to imagine it is to imagine as you raise the frequency, this point at the end of, of the antenna remaining consistent, remaining exactly the way it is, and the wave itself then squishing or moving generally towards the ends of the antenna. In that case, you tend to get a pattern that approaches this, and when you reach 14.050 megahertz, Let's just change this now. We're actually at twice the fundamental frequency of the antenna, or 14.050 megahertz. We have a very high voltage wherever we have zero current or near zero current on an antenna. 
contrary wise we have the minimum voltage where the current is the highest these maxima are called loops and the minima are called nodes so at a current node like this or this or this we have a voltage loop at current loops like that and that we have voltage nodes but it's more useful and practical to consider the current on an antenna than to consider the voltage. It's just easier to illustrate the behavior of the antenna. Well, if we're using open wire, like ladder line for this feed line, we're going to have a rather high standing wave ratio here. It could be on the order of 10 to 1 or so with a 450 ohm line but keep in mind that with 73 ohms at the center here for a half wave antenna the SWR on a 450 ohm line will still be quite high so we're always going to have almost always a high SWR on an antenna of this sort if we have a common ladder line impedance is 450 ohms. But we really don't have to worry very much about that unless the feed line is extremely long because for reasonable lengths of line, a couple of hundred feet or less actually, or 50 meters or less maybe you might say, uh, the loss to begin with in a line like this is very, very low at high frequencies such as 14 or 7 megahertz. High frequencies meaning the short wave part of the spectrum. Nowadays, of course, short waves aren't that short and high frequencies aren't that high, not by comparison to what we see in the gigahertz range of the amateur radio spectrum. But that is what happens here on the second harmonic. Now if we go to further and further harmonics, generally speaking, at the odd harmonics we're going to see a current loop in the center at the odd harmonics of the fundamental. Now remember the fundamental frequency of this antenna F equals 7.025 megahertz. That is the fundamental where it is a half wave long. At odd harmonics of that fundamental, we will see current loops in the center. At even harmonics, we will see current nodes at the center. So, for example, at the third harmonic, on 15 meters, we will see this. That is, in fact, a common practice. You can feed an antenna like this, a 40 meter dipole, on the 15 meter band, and it'll work very well, even with a coaxial line, it'll work quite well, because you get a reasonably good match to 50 ohm or 75 ohm coaxial cable whenever you feed an antenna at a current loop. Anywhere else, not so much. Let's just for the moment look at the fourth harmonic and see what we would get then. Well, what we're going to get then, remember, we keep squishing the waves towards the ends of this antenna. Well, you get my drift, don't you? We keep squishing it towards the ends. So that in the case of the fourth harmonic, we're going to get something that looks like this. You might call that two full waves in phase. Again, at the fourth harmonic here on the 28 megahertz band, in fact that would be 28.100, that's 4F, we will see this state of affairs. <laughs> 
again we will see a current node right here so the feed point impedance here will be very very high but it'll be a pure resistance at a current loop the feed point resistance is relatively low but again it's a pure resistance so those are just some very specific examples of what happens when you feed a dipole antenna or a center fed wire antenna like this at the short wave or HF part of the spectrum at a harmonic of its fundamental frequency. Stan Gibalisco signing off, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV saying 73 and so long.